They tell you that a man can actually identify as a woman, and your instinct, cognitive biology, and common sense reject this idea because your gender is decided at birth. And then they say, no, 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 you're thinking of sex. You know, that word that used to be synonymous with gender until we decided that they were different. Yeah, that word. Sex is biological, gender is chosen. Except, that isn't true. Conversation is awesome! So gender is separate from sex. This idea is being promoted all over the media and culture. This idea is definitely being promoted in universities, I can tell you that for sure. Um, and now even people actually as young as preschool and kindergarten are being indoctrinated with this idea. So take a look. The issue stems from a lesson on what it means to be transgender. After a kindergarten student at Rockland Academy Gateway, born a boy was reintroduced to her class as a transgender girl back in June. Her teacher read the class two books about being transgender. The lesson was done without parents or administrators being notified. I remember, I forgot who said it, but they were talking about what the left does when they try to sound intelligent. Like they take a concept that is totally absurd, like gender being different from sex, and then they think that just because they can explain it to you with their rhetoric from their neo-Marxist pseudoscience that it's intelligent. And they compared it to when a baby spills SpaghettiOs all over its high chair and then thinks that just because it made it look like a dinosaur that it's done something intelligent. Um, and then the parents just standing there like looking at this mess, like what the hell, but. So here's the most damning observation for this idea. If you are born a male and you identify as a female, you will act in ways that females act in order to express this. You will take interest in things that females take interest in. And in other words, you will start to artificially assume the role of a female using the ways that females naturally behave because of their cognitive biology as your template. There would be no way for you to act like a woman if there was no tendency of biological women to act in a certain way. Your identity as a woman, despite being a man, is predicated on the fact that biological women have their own way of behaving. Without that, it collapses. Anyways, you'll find that most of this garbage, whether it be postmodern theory, ex existentialist theory, it can all be traced back to European intellectuals right after World War II, which of course led to the rejection of so-called modernism that is said to have caused the war. And of course, they fled from Europe into the welcoming arms of American academia, many from the Frankfurt School. And it's funny because when the school settled in New York, they became heavily affiliated with Columbia University, and we all know that is the alma mater of the less favorite neo-Marxist Barack Obama. President Obama will go down as perhaps the worst president in the history of the United States, exclamation point, at real Donald Trump. <laughs> well, at real Donald Trump, at least I will go down as a president. Donald Trump built a wall. Donald Trump for us all. These lines connect themselves if you just do a quick few internet searches. The Frankfurt School, for those of you who are not familiar, is a social research institute occupied by Marxist intellectuals. Anyways, with gender theory in particular, they have this really convenient explanation, which is basically that the only reason that men and women are different is because they were taught to be different. They don't believe that there is a male or a female brain. They don't like evolutionary psychology or biology at all, and they really don't like that virtually all empirical data contradicts this idea. But nonetheless, this idea stemmed from a hypothesis that a woman named Simone de Beauvoir wrote about in her book titled The Second Sex in 1949. She wrote that one is not born but becomes a woman. This wasn't tested at the time, it was just a hypothesis, just a theory, but it's the foundation for all modern gender theory, this idea that you are just raised as a male or a female. So then, in the 1950s and 60s, this guy named John Money developed and tested a hypothesis that was based off this idea from Simone de Beauvoir, and his hypothesis was that sex is biological and gender is socially constructed. This is the twin study. You hear a lot about this. This is the foundation for all of it. This study, and when it was published, it was celebrated as groundbreaking and brilliant, a huge success, etc, etc. So what was the study? Basically, this boy named David Reimer had a botched circumcision that left him without a penis. So they removed his testicles and raised him as a girl. He had a twin brother, his name was Brian, and the idea was that they would raise David as a girl and Brian as a boy, and then they would see, you know, what happens. So, two twin boys. Some of these exercises that they did, that they did to reinforce the gender roles had these two twin boys assuming sex positions with each other while John Money took pictures. David, now referred to as Brenda, would have to be in the submissive position while his brother would be in the dominant position. This is how they did it. Gender psychology for you folks, and some might call it child abuse some. This, by the way, is the reason that we now separate sex from gender. This study. This is the reason why, since it was considered to be so successful upon its publication. Was it successful? Well, when David got to be older and his child abuse was revealed to him, he decided that he would rather live as a boy. He said that during this transition from being raised as a girl to living as a boy was the first time in his entire life that he felt happy. He was finally able to live and be treated as a boy, and he was happy, he felt normal, he was thriving. So it would seem that, re that the results of this study that was so supposedly successful are actually incorrect. Also, it's worth mentioning that David's brother Brian later developed schizophrenia, which is of course linked to childhood trauma, and he died from an overdose of antidepressants, and then two years later, David blew his head off with a sawed-off shotgun. 
That's the result of this study. That's the result that no one talks about. You cut off the flow of information after the study was published. You don't like to talk about the aftermath. The study is then the foundation of, you know, this idea of gender fluidity and multiple and infinite genders, which emerged in the 1980s and 1990s from people like Judith Butler, who of course cites money in the twin study as the basis of her hypothesis. Even money would have thought multiple genders is absurd, and he literally took pictures of softcore child pornography in the name of science. So there's his credibility. This is not science. It's not credible. It's not true. Gender is not separate from sex. And anyone that tries to convince you that it is, ask them if they know that the only proof they have of this hypothesis is that a guy tried to raise twins as boys and girls like 50 years ago, and then both of them later ended up living troubled lives and dying prematurely. This is how they explain it, because they don't like the biological differences between men and women, especially those that pertain to cognitive functions. And it's a really funny explanation if you think about it. Here it is. There are 13 brilliant male mathematicians for every one brilliant female mathematician. But that's only because men were raised to like math and women weren't. Really? Colleges aren't giving scholarships exclusively for women in STEM? Women aren't hired at a 2 to 1 ratio over men in STEM jobs? Who's not encouraging them? Where is this boogeyman? Here's an anecdote from my life that supports this in addition to the facts that I just gave. Um, I grew up with sisters, and I had two sisters, and so we had more girl toys than boy toys. So when I'd play with my sister, we'd usually play with Barbies or something like that, but she didn't like playing with me because I would always make the Barbies fight or kill each other and rip each other's legs and heads off, and I know that you think I was a child sociopath, but that was just my male drive to dominate and fight and conquer, just shining through. It didn't matter what I was playing with. Like, sure, it was easier to make my army guys fight, but I won't hesitate to run a Barbie over with a pink convertible either. So parents that try to raise their kids with gender-neutral toys often find that the child is going to inevitably do what the child wants to do with them. For their theory of sex and gender being different, it must be true that there's nothing that makes a man a man except for his reproductive organs, and nothing that makes a woman a woman except for her reproductive organs as well. They reject the idea that there's a male and female brain, and they dismiss any empirical differences in male and female brains as a result of being conditioned or taught to behave in certain ways or take interest in certain things. Obviously, there are exceptions to these tendencies, but citing an anecdote about a friend that you have that's better than boys at solving complex mathematical equations doesn't invalidate the observed tendencies between the two genders. Two, there are two genders. So let's look at a few of these. First, I want to talk about IQ because I think it's very important, and then I'll talk more about IQ in another video. But with IQ differences between men and women, women tend to have average IQs with a steeper normal distribution, meaning that they are more likely to have average intelligence or not deviate from that to either extreme very much. The average male IQ is roughly the same as the average female IQ. However, we also concentrate in both extremes of the distribution, meaning that we have many more high IQ men than high IQ women. But to the contrary, we also have more low IQ men than we do low IQ women. This explains why men dominate STEM fields and women dominate lower IQ majors like early education or social work. And to this you might say, well if men also have clustered presence of low IQ individuals, where are they in those majors? Well, if you look at the graph, you'll notice that while the IQs are low in comparison, they are still at or slightly above average. This explains why while they are female dominated, there's still a male presence. So what happened to all those low IQ men that I mentioned earlier? They didn't go to college. That's what happened. Women are consistently attending college more than men. But the thing we're told to complain about is only when men are more likely to be able to do cognitively challenging tasks pertaining to science and technology, despite its clear explanation through our own biodiversity. Men and women generally perform at about the same level on cognitive tasks, but they have strengths and weaknesses uh, for specific tasks. For example, men excel at mental object rotation, whereas women excel at object location, which of course is why men prefer to use cardinal directions and women prefer to use landmarks. It's hard for these topics to exist in a vacuum because now I want to talk about IQ and transgender influence on children and I want to go in deeper with the differences between men and women but basically what it breaks down to is that if you're going to argue that men and women are the same if you're going to argue that men only act like men because they're taught to do so then why is it so highly correlated so if 0.6% of the population identifies as transgender that means the correlation coefficient for possessing male traits and having a dick is like 0.994 and yes of course we're not you know, supposed to assume that all correlations are inherently causal, but like when it's 0.994 and it's been that way for the last 6 million years, you kind of have to start to wonder, but okay, let's look at the counter argument. The only reason that 99.4% of the population isn't transgender, actually, let's use 99% because the numbers I found didn't include gender non-conforming, which is a thing now too, by the way. So let's say that 99% of the population identifies as the gender that they were born as. Their argument is that the only reason that that is the case is because we're conditioned into that self-identification. They say that by dressing boys in blue and giving girls dolls instead of trucks, we're, per we're perpetuating this oppressive cycle and that we're abusing our children because we're deciding their gender for them. 
okay? I mean, just really think about this. There are so many, infinitely many differences between the two genders regarding cognitive and behavioral functionality, and there's no way that every parent in the history of humanity just sat down with their children and said, now Billy, because you're a boy, you must excel in math, handle stress less effectively, be more competitive, be less likely to give up, be more likely to choose difficult tasks over easy tasks, take risks, be less interested in nurturing behavior, and also be more interested in scientific or blue collar jobs, Billy. Like, no, that conversation has literally never happened, and they don't even claim that it did. They claim that it's only because boys get signed up for ball and they're given Legos for Christmas that all of this just so happens to fall into place, which completely ignores the biological differences between male and female brains regarding the different sizes and developments of certain areas of the brain or the functionality of the neurons in general being different. That was all from one chapter of one book that I have about sexual biodiversity, by the way, and all of those are backed by dozens of clinical trials. Challenge any one of them, and I've got a dozen more examples. Do you actually think that parents are consciously forcing their kids into these behaviors? Have you ever been around a parent trying to force his, his or her kid to do anything, anything they don't want to do? Do you really think that they'd keep at it for 18 years just to make sure the kid turns out like a boy or a girl? No, because they don't need to. Because... Actually, there do exist a, a subculture of vile, abusive parents that are hell-bent on making their kids transgender for the sake of virtue signaling. Let me get that out of the way. We had to watch a documentary in one of my AP psychology classes in high school, and this mom gets on the screen and she goes, and then I asked, how long have you felt like a girl? And her son goes, mama, I don't feel like a girl. I am a girl. And the mom goes, whoa, like it's some sort of magical moment. And the kid's on hormones now and he's being raised like a girl. So yeah, that kid's being abused because the narrative is corrupting everything. My sister thought she was a boy one time. She cut her hair. She only wore boys clothes. And she, this is, she was like nine. This went on for a year. And then she was like, okay, that was fun. I'm all done. Can you imagine what would have happened if my mom was like, yeah, you are a boy. Started giving her hormones. These people are so sick. They literally want to find out if their kid is trans as soon as possible so they can immediately start hormone therapy because they want to block the child from going through puberty. 75 to 95% of these kids won't end up identifying as trans. You are abusing your child for the sake of being on the right side of history. You are dangerously incompetent and your ancestors are frowning on you. They did not survive plagues and wars just for their bloodline to start throwing hormones around to make their kids confused and depressed for the sake of, it's 2018 America, or 2019 now. Um, no, gender and sex are not different. They are the same thing. There are male brains, there are female brains, there are men, there are women. Transgender people are suffering from gender dysphoria or gender identity disorder, whichever DSM you prefer, and we have to help them with their condition. But normalizing this and pretending that it's backed by science helps no one at all. It isn't backed by science, it's backed by child abuse that was labeled as an experiment and some postmodern neo-Marxist theory. That's it. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Hopefully we all learned something, right?